This presentation is called, What is Behavioral Modernity? So ANTH 105 is titled Evolution and Human Behavior, and that combination of words can mean many different things. So what is ANTH 105 really all about? Well, one answer to that question is that Anthropology 105 is about the evolution of human behavioral modernity. And why is that? Well, the answer is that this course focuses on the behavior of living human beings. And all living human beings belong to one species that we call Homo sapiens sapiens. And Homo sapiens sapiens evolved in East Africa, most likely, around 200,000 years ago. And we expanded beyond Africa sometime after 60,000 years ago. So the human family is really quite closely related, everyone who's alive today. And as a side note, that KYA stands for thousand years ago. So the K stands for thousand. So the reason why we talk about behavioral modernity is that Homo sapiens sapiens is identified paleontologically as anatomically modern humans. So there's an equation between Homo sapiens sapiens as a species and the designation anatomically modern humans. So how do you know an anatomically modern human when you see one? Well, anthropologists have worked out quite a lot of criteria for this. And it turns out that our anatomy exhibits a suite of modern features. And we'll just look briefly at our crania. So this skull was uh, found in Israel. It's somewhere between 80 and 120,000 years ago. And it's called the skull skull. But if we look at it, we'll see that the brow ridge is relatively small that there's a distinct forehead. So one thing about Homo sapiens sapiens is that we have foreheads. <clears throat> the brain case is rounded. Our teeth tend to be quite small relative to ancestral hominins. And we have rather weak jaws, and that shows up in our skeletal structure of what are called zygomatic arches. Ours are quite small. Now we can compare that to an earlier ancestral hominin that's called Homo erectus. And here we can see quite a massive brow ridge. There's an absence of a forehead. Although the dentition is reduced from earlier hominins, the teeth are larger than ours, especially the molars. And those strong jaws result in big zygomatic arches. And way up on the top of the skull, there's what's called a sagittal crest, uh, where muscles also attached. So we have a pretty clear idea of what the crania of an anatomically modern human looks like. Now, if we go below the neck, it's a little different because Homo erectus is anatomically modern in terms of its postcranial skeleton. So Homo erectus was an efficient obligate biped and probably ran about as efficiently as we can. And if you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, then you want to take ANTH 101, Introduction to Biological Anthropology. One of the points we can draw from that example is that evolution is usually mosaic. So that different features evolve at different times. And not all of our anatomy, and likely not all of our behavior, has changed at the same time or for the same reasons. So if we look over the long run of hominin evolution, then bipedalism came first starting out about 7 million years ago, 
and expansion of brains came later starting about two and a half million years ago. And we can talk about characteristics that are derived as opposed to conserved. So a derived characteristic is one that's changed from its ancestral form, whereas a conserved characteristic is one that's stable. It might be that what we call positive selection has produced those derived traits, and that just means that they had an adaptive advantage that increased their frequency in ancestral populations. And it could be that what we call negative selection maintains that conservation of traits in that it might prevent any mutations because the ones that are occurring are deleterious and reduce our chances of survival. So our skeletons, our anatomy, and likely our behavior is a mix of older and younger features, some derived or changed from ancestral forms, and others conserved and quite similar to ancestral forms. So our question is, does our behavior exhibit a similar suite of modern features that we can identify in the same way that we can identify the features of anatomical modernity? So can we identify and explain the evolution of human behavioral modernity? Now it's likely that some modern behaviors may be very old and conserved, and Sarah Hurdy argues, for example, that our capacity to mind read in the evolution of empathy might be over a million years old. On the other hand, some other modern behaviors might be quite recent. It's quite hard to determine, but there are arguments that the capacity for language that we're all so familiar with maybe no older than 70,000 years. So this course is about humans like yourself. We're interested in you. And that is why we want to understand behavioral modernity. Thank you for listening.